<laughs> Today on Never Legends podcast, I have my Oakton Madison uh, rivalry preview, uh, soccer preview. The, these two teams are playing uh, tomorrow night in the regional final. Uh, huge rivalry. Uh, with me from Oakton, I got Avery Brucker. Um, she's a JMU uh, uh, commit uh, starting next year, and she plays uh, club ball at Union and uh, ECNL uh, in 06. And I got from Madison, I got Kira Hartogs. Uh, she's a, a, a junior at, at Madison. She's already signed with Xavier. Um, and um, uh, both of these players have just been made first team all region. And I'm so glad that they joined me. Uh, guys, thanks for doing this. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, well, first first of all, and I, and I mentioned uh, rivalry. Um, you know, I saw the first game between Oakton and Madison. And um, first of all, it was very well played. And I thought it was a very clean game. L later on, I understood that the game was, you know, a little more physical than I may have noticed. Um, it, it, is this a big rivalry? Like the Herndon, um, the Herndon McLean boys game is a huge rivalry. They talk trash on social media. Um, it's well known to be this huge rivalry. Fights don't break out. But what, if, what about Oakton and Madison? And I, and I can imagine being close together may have something to do with it as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the rivalry has been around forever. I know I had listened to your previous po podcast with the McLean and Herndon. It was sort of a more recent rivalry. But I mean, I think when you have two schools that are within like five minutes of each other, there's just always going to be a rivalry. And then it's not as much called this with soccer, but with football, it's called the backyard brawl. So it, they're literally in the backyard of each other. Um, so I think that really adds on to the rivalry. Yeah. Avery, do you, do you see it the same way? Yeah, I think the rivalry just goes way back. Like Kira said, not just with soccer too. Like I feel like with every sport, it's always Oakton and Madison and that's always a big game. And a part of the rivalry is like, I feel like we all know each other. We all went to at least middle school, elementary school together. So it's just like when you know someone and you're playing against someone that you know, like you want to do good and like strive. So, you know, the competition is there. And also Madison and Oakton are both like really good teams. They both have so much talent. So also it's just always a good, it's always a good time playing Madison. Yeah. yeah. And it's always fun to play against people that you grow up with. Cause I think a lot of us, have played are either on the same team now or or on the same team when we were younger. Yeah. yeah. So well, you, you did mention the, the union. We, we mentioned union. You guys both play for union in that program. Um, is if you look at both rosters, are there a lot of girls that all play for the same same club teams, or it's just a few? Uh, I mean, I mean, how well do you know each other? Uh, and and are are there close friends on on each on each team, um, even outside the pitch? Um, there, a, there's a bunch of ECNL girls on each team. Um, I play with Izzy. She's on my team on the 05, 07, I mean, 05, 06. And then also Hannah on Madison is on 05, 06 and Kira is on the 07 team. And I think that's the only people from VA Union. Yeah, we know. have, we have one more. We have Sydney who's. Oh yes. The OH. freshman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple from Brave. Mm -hmm. right yeah. loud in so there's just a bunch of talent on both teams from great clubs yeah well, well if you guys are so close together why do you think there's so few people play on the same club i would i would think you, you guys would have more overlap than you really do it's kind of surprising to me if there's only a few uh, people that play together i mean i think it's just because there's so many clubs in the area and it's sort of just like where you grow up is sort of where you land or if you've moved throughout your year your years playing travel is just sort of like that's just sort of where you are I mean I know I moved clubs I started out at Vienna and then I went to Loudon and then I came back to McLean so I think it's just sort of where you end up and I think we have around five or I think it might be three or four ECNL teams in the area and then one GA team so I think that adds to it yeah Avery do you want do you want to add that or no she said it perfectly yeah yeah well um we talked a little bit about Oakton and Madison how close uh they they are um do you, you know, are the, are the kids, the students, not just the players, are they very similar at, at the two schools? Like I, I grew up, I went to Robinson. Um, Oakton was in our district. Uh, we played them all the time. But I, I knew a lot of kids from Madison from playing youth football and basketball. It wasn't like we didn't. We knew the Oakton kids better just because we played them so many times and I played football and basketball. So every year I, 
I, I competed against those kids. But, um, you know, over, over time, demographics change, kids change. Are the kids generally the same with the two schools? I would say so, yeah. I would say since we all grew up in Oakton, the town of Vienna, and went to like, I think most of us went to middle school together, like Thoreau, yeah. and then we split high schools. So I think, yeah, we're very similar, but we're also like both very diverse schools. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, uh, Oakton kids and Madison kids, they go to parties and hang out together. That's, that's not a big deal. You, that would be a normal thing to see. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty normal. It's pretty normal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if Robinson and Lake Braddock kids still hang out. I don't I have no idea. That was, that was, that was, we did it all, all the time when we were in high school. Um, well, let's talk a, a little bit about what high school soccer means. Now, um, you know, there's always pushback with high level players. Um, you know, sometimes you have to decide whether you have time because the club commitments are substantial. Um, but, you know, what, what does playing for your high school mean to you? And it is, is it, is it different than playing for your club? Yeah, I would say it's pretty different. I mean, with club, it's sort of where you develop as a player. I mean, your technical ability and then I think the way you see the field is definitely influenced by your club coaches. And then high school is sort of a place where you can showcase that. I mean, you come in as a freshman and then you obviously try out for your team. And then if you make it, whether it's JV or varsity, you get to play for your school. So I think that's super different. And it's I don't necessarily think that high school develops you because you're already to a point where when you come in as a freshman, but I think it definitely can add to your game depending on your coach and then your school. Yeah. Avery, you feel the same? Yeah, no, I feel the same. I think high school, you have more freedom on the ball. Um, me personally, I'm very creative on the ball in high school. Um, I don't have to like in high school, I mean, sorry, in club, I have to like check my shoulders all the time. And I feel like I have a lot, lot of freedom in high school um, with that. And I feel like in ECNL, we have like a system and a certain style of play. And in high school, it's just kind of like go play and try to score as many goals as you can. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Well, you mentioned checking your shoulders. Uh, is there a chance playing high school you can pick up bad habits? The fact that you like you don't have to do that? Oh, that for be... sure. My my uh, club coach always said, like, if, we're, if I'm having bad practice, it's like, get out of high school mode. <laughs> it's like, you're not checking your shoulders. You're not like, you're, you're not having a good practice because I feel like high school and club it, are two different uh, things. It's very, it's very different. Um, so yeah, definitely like when translating to a club it's definitely difficult to come back yeah um Kira, you feel club. the same way you get some, some bad habits from the high school I think yeah I think you definitely can pick up bad habits and especially the timing that we're in I mean this coming weekend I don't know if Avery's team's going but my team's going to North Carolina for a showcase and then in a few weeks we have playoffs so I think especially with um public schools because our soccer season is in the spring and private schools is in the fall so I think with the fall, we're in regular season for um, clubs. So there's definitely bad habits you can pick up that you sort of have to have like two different sides of your brain, your club side, and then your high school side that you have to be able to differentiate. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, mm -hmm. One day they have to align it up. So I guess there's 37 states that play soccer in the fall and the one or two play in the winter, California and the rest play in the spring. And um, we're one of the ones that, that um, uh, play in the spring. Now, you know, I talked to a player named Cooper Noseworthy. Cooper's going to JMU Avery. Oh, he's already there. He's a first year, but he was a player of the year last year at the Washington Post. He told me that there was parts of high school that developed his game. Like, for example, the, the shots mean a little bit more. He felt more pressure in, in a high school game. So it was good for him to, to play high school soccer. Do you guys feel that way? There's aspects of high school that make you a better player? You can take this one first. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the atmosphere is super different than in high school and club. Um, the crowd definitely like gets me going. Like I love when my friends come and support me and like my family, the admi administration and my teachers, like that makes me want to do better in my games. Um, and yes, um, like I get way more shots on the ball in high school and everything, so. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I would agree with that. And I think the energy is a lot different with high school. I mean, you have like your student body who come to support you um, and then teachers and staff that, I mean, if you're close to them, they would come to see you. And I think in club, it's just, 
your parents and or siblings that are coming to your games and with the rivalry games at high school, the energy is even more and you get more students to come out because they want to see your team win. So I think that energy also helps. Yeah. And do you get some butterflies for the, uh, for the high school games? I would say for so. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you might necessarily, when you play a hundred club games a year, you might necessarily have those, might not necessarily have those butterflies in club games. Is that, is that true? Yeah. I mean, I think it depends on the game, but. Yeah. Definitely in the showcases, I would get butterflies. Yeah. yeah. Those yeah. are nerve wracking, but. Yeah. 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 And the challenge is different. Like in club, everyone's a high level player. So, but therefore the passes could be, you, you know where your teammates are going to be probably, you know them pretty well. So there's aspects of the club that makes it easier to play. In high school, obviously all the competition is not going to be on the same level, but also maybe the passes are not perfect as well. There are other aspects. So the challenge is probably still high, even though, the level of competition is not high, as, as high, I should say. Is, yeah. is that true? Yeah, yeah. I feel like um, in, in club, we see each other five days a week and play on the weekends. And in, in high school, we only have three months together, maybe more, depending how far you make it. So in your high school team, like you build throughout the three months, like you start off kind of rocky and then you build into a way better team. Um. But yeah, it's just like, I feel like in club, you know your teammates so much better. You know what they're going to do on and off the ball. And in high school, it's a little tricky because we could be playing kickball the whole game and it's very difficult to play kickball. So I think it just, yeah, it's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. Garrett, Garrett, do you want to add to that? Yeah, and I think so as you come in and you get seniors leave and then freshmen come in with the new season, I think that's where... Avery's talking about how it's sort of rocky because you don't really know each other. You've never played with each other before. Like the people in your class, you always play with them the year before, but then as the season continues to progress, the chemistry builds and you do so see each other every day because with high school, we have practice every day. So I think as you get into the April and May, um, that's where it gets to be better. That's what I love about high school sports. I love watching the soccer teams develop through the year. I mentioned um, the, the Robinson Lake Braddock game, the boys game last week. I, it was such a high level game. And and I, 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 I had seen Robinson earlier in the year and I just couldn't believe much better the team had gotten through the years. And um, did you guys, let me mention, do you guys get a lot of pushback from your club, from your club coaches about uh, playing? I know uh, they, they, may tease, they may tease you about put, picking up bad habits. But do they ever say, look, we don't want you to play club club? I mean, we don't we don't want you to play high school soccer? Yes. Mainly because of injury. Like for an example, Hannah, she uh mm. did she break her foot? She it was like a high ankle sprain. Yeah. yeah, and she had a concussion in the beginning of the year. So she's been beat up all season and our coach was not very happy <laughs> with her. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why they disencourage high school. Because they don't want their players to get hurt, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie, you see it the same way? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How about um how, how is it? We have a we have a very um well then I don't think they're doing so well this year yet, but the Washington spirit um is 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 in town and the you know it, there's a certain energy um with uh, pro women's soccer now, pro women's basketball too. Um and you go to a game, there's definitely energy there. Um, do you think that's helped um, um, high level club players in the area to have a pro franchise and a place uh, role models in the area that, that are playing pro soccer? Yeah, I would definitely say so. And I think a lot of it is because when we were younger, it, women's soccer wasn't on TV as much, but now it is. And you're, you can like three clicks of your remote on the TV and you can get it up. And then also with us being in the DC area, we can go to a game pretty much whenever we want. So I think that definitely helps. And then with the young girls, I think they're more inspired to continue playing rather than just the boys who see like um, uh, the Premier League that's on TV. Yeah. Yeah, Kara said it perfectly. I actually went to a Washington Spirit game last summer and it was very, the energy was there. It was cool. It was. Yeah. yeah. When you look at your role models and, and players that have influenced you, is it mostly female players or is it both male and female? Uh, for me, I think both male and female, just because, I mean, on Saturday and Sunday mornings, you turn on the TV and the Premier League is up and you're watching that. But I mean, also with the U.S. Women's National Team, there's women on there, too, that I obviously look up to. 
And Hartogs, is that German or is that Dutch? Um, Belgian. Oh, it's Belgian. Do you have, you have a favorite uh, Belgian team? Um, well, um, when the World Cup is on, I support Belgium. That's where my grandpa's from. So, and then when I'm watching Premier League, I like to watch Kevin De Bruyne because um, he plays for Belgium. So, yeah. yeah. But Belgium, that great generation, never really got to where it was supposed to go. But um, don't want to give you a hard time about that. You might, you <laughs> might not want to talk to me anymore. Uh, Avery, what about you? Um, are most of your uh, role models are they male, female, or both? Female, for sure, for sure. Um, Ashley Sanchez is I look up to her I have actually like gotten a bunch of uh people saying that I play like her when I got recruited by the JMU coach coach Josh he said I play exactly like her and that's what attracted him to my play so I look up to her a lot and she's yeah. very talented yeah I think it's I think it's great you know when I was your guys's age and that was a long time ago but um there was no soccer on tv at all I mean, I guess they had like um, once a week, there was like an hour of, of German um, and uh, German uh, pro Bundesliga, but there wasn't even a, a pro men's league because it, it stopped in like 1980. So it was so hard to, and there was no YouTube. So, you know, to find great uh, soccer was very tough. Now, how about the club scene? Now you guys mentioned, um, you know, you have these great showcases and that, that, that's a, a great way to get, scene and get development do you think we do a good job in northern virginia and in and youth uh girls soccer generally in the, identifying good players and developing good players uh did, did, did you did you find i know that uh, kira mentioned she had to change clubs a couple times um is is um you know is is it a complicated process to find the right path uh to get to the next level to be a high level club player I mean, I think it really depends on the person and sort of where you start. I mean, for me, when was starting with Vienna and then I just sort of grew out of it and then I wanted to get to the next level, which was ECNL. So I think it really depends. But then once you find your home, I think it's definitely easier to get looks. I mean, at, at our ECNL games, I think it might have been our Florida or Tennessee showcase. We had 120 plus coaches on the sidelines. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. Is that where Xavier found you? Yeah, at our oh. Florida showcase. Yeah. Awesome. It works. Yeah. yeah. See, one thing about Florida, there's if it's Orlando, there's like soccer fields everywhere. <laughs> Disney and and um and soccer fields. What about you, uh, uh Avery, Avery, do you feel the same? Oh uh, yes, I feel the same. I think that once you find your club and your right match, and I think they set you up really well. Like the A Union, we I've been to so many showcases, like I don't I don't even know how many. And I think those really prepare you for the next level to play Division One soccer. Um, and yeah, so I think your club like prepares you very well for going to the next level. Yeah. Well, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about your your high school coaches first. When I um, I I had put highlights of your of your um, high school team um, on a Nova Soccer Source. And so it's it's interesting when Avery just said there was a lot of kickball. The thing that came to mind when I watch your teams play is they play like club club like club teams. They're very well coached to me and lots of really good connections. But I guess it's all relative. I mean, I'm I'm sure it's even more so at the club level. But I, I I've interviewed uh, Jim Mensa from from Madison, Kira's coach. Um, I know the Oakland's coaches. I hear Hassan. I believe is that right? Um, yes. Avery. So talk a little bit about your your coaches and. Uh, on their style. Um, uh, Kira, why don't you go first and talk about Coach Mensa? Yeah, so I mean, he came in this year. Obviously, we had Coach Devin before, and she did a great job of building our program up. And then this year, she had a baby, which the entire team in our program like fully supports that. And then as Jim came in, he wanted to continue this success that Devin had. Um, and we've done that so far, and we're excited for what's to come. And I think his approach, I mean, we had practice today and he was just talking about like us playing like us and I think that's where you see a lot of the club play come into high school that we're playing as we would in a club because we get success from it so I think that's one of the things that he focuses on and things haven't changed that much under coach Jim um I, I think they have different approaches but I mean we've succeeded but last season and this season and we've both we've gotten to the same point this both years so I think different but the same yeah, it's going well. How about you, Avery? How about how about over at Oakton? 
Um, Coach Z, that's what we call him. Um, Coach Z has been here for four years since my freshman year. So I've been with him since the start of my high school career and his as well. And he has just made Oakton super successful. We were district champs last year, region champs. We made it to state quarterfinals. I didn't play in the state quarter quarterfinals because I fractured my hip, unfortunately. Sorry about that. So our season ended then. And I think my sophomore year, we also won districts. Or I'm pretty sure we won districts too. So he has just um, made Oakton super successful since he's been here. And he... He can be super intense, but it's out of love. And he's also <laughs> like, he's not American. So it's kind of difficult to understand him because he has a really thick accent, but he he knows the game of soccer. He played himself um, out in Europe somewhere. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. but, so he's very experienced and he loves to hop in in our practices and play with us. So it's very cool to have a coach like that. Yeah, Avery, I did... Um contact him and offer to do an interview, but I guess maybe he didn't feel quite as comfortable with, with the language uh, barrier, which is un understandable. Well, let's talk about, about your, uh, your season. Um, first of all, every year at Madison and Oakland, you're going to have high expectations. I'm sure um, what the successor programs have, everyone expects you guys to win everything every year. Um, so that I, I could probably assume that coming in, um, you know, Oakton, Oakton season, um, you lost to uh, South County, who's still alive in the in the Occoquan region. You lost to a, a talented o a Yorktown team, and you tied uh, Chantilly. Um, but all in all, it's been a great season. So, how would you compare um, Avery your season compared to the expectations? Um, I think coming in from last year, we had super high expectations to do very well, and unfortunately, our first game back, we lost to South County which we did not expect to at all. But so far, I think we've been doing pretty well. Um, a couple of rockiness, but that's every team. Um, but I feel like we're doing good. We've been doing good, and I think we're very proud of ourselves for coming this far and qualifying the States again. Well, one thing I will say is you guys had a very tough road in the regional tournament. You had to beat Yorktown and Washington and Liberty. And I believe oh, both yeah. them both them on the road, I believe. Oh no, Yorktown may have been at home. Yorktown was here. Your our Yorktown game when we lost, they just got a lucky PK. <laughs> <So> <laughs> that, that was unfortunate. And W and L is a very good team. They were very aggressive. So that was a very difficult game, but Izzy stepped up and scored two goals, which was amazing. Yeah, that's great. Well, well, Kira and Madison, again, you have you have Coach Devin. Um, stepping down for the year and you get Coach Jim uh, stepping in and you guys also lost early to a Marshall team. I understand they have a really good freshman player as Madison has as well. Um, you know, you tied Chantilly um, this year, but then you beat Chantilly 8-1 to one, and then you got by him 2-1. Um, to one. So when you look back at your season, um, how has it gone compared to your expectations? Um, I think it's we've been on track I mean obviously our goal we had set goals at the beginning of the year and we we've wanted to go um get like hit them step by step and the first one was districts and um, we achieved that goal and then our next one was region and we obviously have that game coming up tomorrow um I think regular season um we did really well uh, we had the loss to Marshall which was I wouldn't say unexpected but I mean I think it was a bit of a hit in the stomach um and that sort of I guess it was a wake up call. And I mean, since then we've been doing pretty well. Um, so I think, yeah. Yeah. Now your team, Oakton's has, has a lot of one goal victories. You guys, you know, tend to score more and win pretty easily. Um, do you think in, in some ways it's, it's good to have it that way or is it better to win a whole bunch of close games? Um, I think a mix of both. I think with us, once we hit the gas, we don't really stop, um, which I think is good because once we get to the games where it's closer, we, we're not going to let off the pedal. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a mix of both. And with the Marshall loss, I think that was sort of a closer game that we had and we experienced it early. And we were like, no, we don't like this. And so we've been scoring more. Yeah. Avery, you guys have had a lot of close games. Are those, are those close games nerve wracking, especially when you know that um, when it's a knockout game and it could be your last? For sure, for sure. Yeah, we've had very, very close games. Uh, yeah, the Tilly game, unfortunately, we didn't score. 
um yeah we little goal like we had more goals last year um and not so many this year but we luckily our defense is really have has stepped up and has a and our goalie we have a senior goalie chloe and then our freshman steps up sometimes and she's really really good Anjali. yeah you um, guys i mean yeah. i saw the all district team it was just full of oakton madison players madison um first teamers uh uh daphne vander the vander wide vander wide uh yes. Ste stella steiner hannah harms lillian perkins kira aaron lockhart the goalie and then oakton avery isabella uh, Yusefi, who you call Izzy, uh, Alex Bram, Aaron Cliff. Um, it's just so much talent uh, all over the field. And I'm sure if if you guys, you guys could probably name several more of your teammates that could deserve recognition. So, you know, Kira mentioned, you know, you know, practicing a lot, showcases, and so did Avery. How do you keep yourself from being over overloaded this time of year? Like you have this big game tomorrow night, huge game tomorrow night. How do you, how do you get yourself to make sure you're not, you're not tired and you have, you have good legs for a big occasion like this. Um, I think recovery is really important. And with Madison, we have um, one of our assistant coaches, Pat, um, he does recovery with us. So he focuses on keeping our muscles um, fresh. Um, and we do a lot like in between games and before big games, we work with him. And then I guess personally, it's a lot of management. So if I'm not feeling the best, taking it light in club or not practicing at club or vice versa and not participating in a high school practice or taking it pretty easy. If you said to your club coach, I have a high school championship game tomorrow night, would that, would that go over well? Um, I think with my current coach, he would understand. I have Brent and I know Avery had him last year and he's um, pretty understanding with that stuff. I think if it was a regular season game, he'd be like, it's just regular season, but mm -hmm. because it is a championship game, I think he would understand. And yeah. Yeah. Avery, does, if you. Um, yeah. Um, well, Brent is super understanding. Um, I think, sorry, I'm blanking. No, no I was going to say, yeah, uh, keeping yourself fresh and keeping your legs for the for when you have club. I think mainly yeah. this year, since I am a senior, I don't have to focus on club as much as Kira does, and she does, has to go to nationals and has the showcase this weekend. So I've been mainly focusing on high school because last year I made the mistake of doing two-a-days high school um, and high school club like lifting because I did a lifting class in school. So I had so much on my plate last year, which I think caused my injury. So with recovery for this year, I've been doing cryo um, in the bubble legs. And I think that has helped a bunch. And so, yeah, I've been mainly like not going to high school just because I don't need to as much as Kira does. Um, so, yeah. Well, guys, when you think about a regional final, um, is it more fun to play a, a familiar opponent, a, a rivalry game, or would it be would it be fun playing a brand new opponent? And I, I, I you have no say in this, so uh, but just just curious, which which would be more fun to you guys? Um, I think for me personally, it sort of depends. With Oakton, we sort of know them, and while we don't know their approach to the game, we have an idea of their good players, and then some of their weaknesses. So I think that's a benefit, but then playing a brand new team, they don't know who you are either. So I think for me personally, I would say, honestly, I have no idea, but I mean, I think both of them both have their benefits. Yeah. I would rather play Madison uh, over a, a random team. I think I love the rivalry between us. I think it's, I think it's great. I think the energy, like more people want to go to a high intensity game than a game they don't know how it's going to play out. They know Oakton and Madison is going to be a really good, intense game. So more fans will pop out. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a nice, it's going to be a nice crowd. Uh, yeah. You know, no, no doubt about it. Um, what do you guys, when you, when you look back on the first game, and again, I, I was there, I believe it was 2-1. It got close late because uh, Madison scored, a, scored, a, scored for 2-1 late. And, and then they actually put pressure to, to go after the equalizer. But when you when you think about the first game, how would you how would you analyze it? You got it. Um, honestly, looking back, I my memory isn't great with that game. <laughs> but I mean, I think um, obviously the energy was super high, and I can't remember who scored first. But I think it happens with all games when you're down. But in the last seconds, you want it even more. So I think um, 
at least going into this game, it's we're obviously not going to try to not be down super quickly. But um, yeah, I, I don't remember the game that well. Yeah, maybe it was three to two. Maybe you guys scored first, then Oakland scored two. Yeah, I think it was three to two. Yeah, I think I think Madison scored first. How about, how about, how about you, Avery? When you look back on the first game, I know you had some opportunities to score yourself. I remember you having a lot of shots and all, and almost getting a, a and one in there. But what do you think about the first the first uh, game? Um, I think since we were down first, we kind of lost, you know, confidence in ourselves. But then I'm pretty sure Izzy had the other goal. Mm -hmm. And that, like, that got us going. Once she scored that, we just needed to get a second one. And I think we were playing really well as a team. I remember the game got very physical um, and very intense. And luckily, Izzy, I think, found me. I spinned out of the defender and I had I had a goal um so I yeah I my memory isn't the best on that game as well but I just remember super high intensity and it got aggressive it got very intense yeah wait wait till you get my age and you have to struggle with memory um so look well mm -hmm. well best of luck on those games guys I, it's going to be great um two amazing teams quickly what about college soccer um you know, I was surprised when my when my son became a senior how, and, you know, his team got we lost in the state final one year. But it was amazing. I would say out of the 15 or 16 kids that contributed, maybe two or three played in played in college. Most of the kids are they're playing club or just intramural somewhere. Most of the kids did not play. Generally, are, are most of the girls on your, on your high school, like the like the starters, you know, the, the, the top players, are they going to play in college or do you have? teammates that are that could play in college but just want to be students and you know they've they've been training and playing all these games all their lives and they want something new does that does that happen on on, on the girls side too yes um one of my good friends on club uh decided she didn't want to play um soccer in college and I think but I think most of the most of the girl like majority of the girls on my team play college and uh sorry yeah uh, soccer in college uh, because we're already doing so like time commitment like it, we put so much work into all of this like they want to award award themselves into playing division one or div any division soccer and it is a, it is a weird feeling you do all this training all these games and then as a parent you know you're you're there and you're you're financing it you're always there supporting and then it's over and it's just weird and mm -hmm. so many of these kids walk away and and they're fine with it. It just seems really strange. And I, I don't. I think the parents take longer to adjust uh, than than, yeah. than the parents than the players do. How about how about you, Kira? Do you know a lot of players that that don't want to play in college? Um, I think for my club team at least, I think majority of majority of us do, and I think a lot of us are already committed. We just have a few that are left. And then high school wise, I think right now we have three commits, and I know a couple. I know our two freshmen both want to play in college, and I think there might be a few other ones that do want to play, but um, I think it's a mix with high school. A lot of them just want to like play soccer and continue playing soccer through high school and then focus on academics. But in the club world, I think most of us playing at that high of a level are competing to play in college. Kara, when you think about going to Xavier, um, you know, what, what are your goals? Uh, and I know you're probably, you know, just, just happy to be playing college soccer and you'll cross a lot of those bridges when you get to it. But when you think about what, do you, what would be your goals as, as a college soccer player? I mean, I think coming in and then fighting for playing time or even a starting spot as a freshman is a lot of people's goals. And that's one of mine. And then um, Xavier won the regular season Big East. And so I think doing that again and then helping the team win the Big East tournament as well. And then competing again in the NCAA tournament, because I think they went one round this year. So, yeah. Yeah, I saw them play at Georgetown either this year or the year before, uh, and it's Georgetown's an amazing place to watch a game, and I I, yeah. I love watching watching them. And I, I can't, I think I think Georgetown may have won that game, but I don't, I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. How about how about how about you, Avery? What, what would be your goals? Like my daughter is at James Madison. She's a sophomore. Um, she'll be a sophomore. Um, so it's it's a great place. She loves it. But when you think about James Madison, where does where does soccer fit in, and what are some of your goals? Yeah, obviously, um, fighting for that spot, uh, starting position and playing time as a freshman. Um, and if I do start and play at JMU my freshman year, score as many goals as possible mm -hmm. and assist my team in being su successful 
and hopefully making the NCAA tournament again because we made it last year and played South Carolina and unfortunately lost. But just repeating that and also winning the Sun Belt Conference. Yeah. Um, I think we we made it to the championship, but we lost to ODU, Old Dominion. Um, yeah. One, one thing you guys have going for you is the COVID year is over. So, you know, a lot of times, I think, I th well, I think maybe the next year will be last year, maybe. Well, it's almost over. So you had so many older kids competing against the young kids. And it made it really tough on kids to get playing time, players to get <laughs> playing time right away because of that. I think it's, I think it's coming to an end. I'm not saying they didn't deserve it. Those are very difficult times, but I think it's kind of trickled down and made it tough on people. Yeah. Like the fifth year has definitely got in the way and the just, yeah, it was difficult. Yeah. Um, well, good. Well, look, uh, in, in real, real quickly, last, last question. Um, you know, I know you, uh, the coaches, one of the main reasons why you're, you're going to the school is because the coaches were interested in you. You both mentioned that. Um, what about the schools do you like other than soccer? Um, what about, you know, James Madison, Harrisonburg, and Xavier, which I believe is in Cincinnati? Here? Yeah. What, what what do you like about those schools other than soccer? Um, for me, I chose JMU because it, it was very close to home. And I think being a student athlete, I want to be close to home. Um, because it, it, being a student athlete, it's a full-time job. It's a lot of work. It's stressful. And just having my mom nearby was a big thing for me since I am like a homebody. And obviously I want my parents to come to all the games, which they are fortunate to drive down to Harrisonburg because it's only like an hour 45, two hours max. Um, so I think that was a big thing for me. And and Brandon's they, Brandon's gonna be Brandon's gonna be close by too. Sorry, yes, Brandon. <laughs> yes, my dad. <laughs> Yes, he will be down too. Um, and I think they love that I picked JMU since it was so close to that they can come to every single one of my home games. Yeah. And, and beyond that, did you like, what about the, what about the campus is beautiful? My, my daughter oh, the campus was beautiful. Uh, football field was amazing. Like so cool. Um, yeah, it just kind of felt like home and I thought it was right for me. And yeah, the, the campus is so big. It's like divided by a highway, which is crazy so it's very big so i'm gonna have to get like a little scooter but yeah, yeah. interesting and the soccer the soccer uh, field is next to the dorms which is which is nice oh yes the freshman dorms are directly right next to the soccer fields which is very convenient yeah so that's cool. and they're super nice like they just renovated they got all new things so that that it's pretty cool like the dorms are super nice the facility they got brand new facilities we got we just went on our visit in the spring and it was super amazing it was cool yeah I, hopefully my daughter's not listening to this but uh, it's a little bit of a party a little bit of a party school down there though just it is uh, a, it is a party school <laughs> yeah so, fair, fair, fair warning there uh my bird, i've heard uh, yeah, yeah so all right Kira, what about I, I my mother's family is from um about 50 miles uh northeast of cincinnati i know the area really well uh so why, why did you choose xavier other, other than soccer yeah, so I mean, I was obviously interested in their soccer program. And then um, academically, they had exactly what I wanted. I'm interested in studying business with potentially a minor in sports marketing. So that was available for me. And on my visit, they had brought me in to meet with one of the uh, business um, advisors. So getting to learn about that was really important. And then um, campus wise, it's not a super big campus, but it's big enough. And then I always wanted to be close to a city just because I feel like there's so much to do there. Um, and then it is a bit of a hike from home. I think it's like a seven hour drive, but flying time is only about an hour. So my main thing was as long as I can get home when I need to, I'm good with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then when I went on my visit, the team seemed super tight and then the facilities were also really nice. So I think everything together. Yeah. Now Xavier is a Catholic school. Is that correct? Jesuit. Yeah. Jesuit. Is, is, is that going to be an adjustment going from these big, a big public school like, uh, like, uh, Madison, then going to a, a, a Jesuit school like, like Georgetown is too, I believe. Yeah. I mean, I think. I don't think it'll be a huge adjustment. When I was talking to the players on the team, I had asked them if everyone, if you didn't have to be religious or if a lot of people were, and they were saying there's a mix of both. So, I mean, I think it'll be interesting because I think you do have to take your religion class, but um, my grandparents are both Jewish. So I'm going to take one of those classes and learn more about Judaism. So I think there, it will be a bit of an adjustment, but I think it'll be a good one. 
Yeah. Well, I'm sure it'll be great. It's just an opportunity to learn something new. And I, I, I'm my, my father was a minister, um, even though I've, I've probably never been the most religious person in the world, but I, I loved religion classes in college. I found them very interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, whether or not you subscribe to everything. But um, Kira, did you, think, did you think it was interesting that Avery chose to go to James Madison? Maybe there's a message there that geek got inside. She wanted to go to James Madison High School and this is her <laughs> way of finally finally showing it. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> in uh, middle school, I did want to go. I did want to, all my friends were going to Madison. I was like, I really want to go to Madison. But I went to Oakton instead. Yeah. yeah, you were in purple and gold, not, not uh, red and black right so yeah. purple's my favorite color too so that's yeah. a plus <laughs> yeah well look you guys are you guys were great um thanks for your patience uh, it's just a joy to talk to you guys and you know I've, I've watched you guys play and you guys are both amazing players teams are awesome i just wish you best of luck very happy win or lose you both stay alive and you can play in the state uh tournament i mean it's, it's an amazing thing to represent uh your school at states my my sister uh, as a point guard at Robinson, won two state championships, and her name, her, her name, she's in the Hall of Fame at Robinson. And her team is on the um, on the wall there in the gym, and I, I'm nowhere to be found at Robinson, um, but I, I've seen it done. It's just amazing accomplishment for you girls. So I'm very happy for you, and but and thanks for being good sports and coming on and and talking to me. I you guys are you know very deep thinkers about about soccer and development. So this has been a really enjoyable conversation for me. Yeah, thank, thank you. So much. Yeah. Well, look, again, good, good luck, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon on the field. Yes. Good luck, Kira. You too. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys.